Hello everyone. Today let us read about high yield clinical scenarios and some mnemonics. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe. First clinical scenario. There will be a history of gout, intellectual disability, self mutilating behavior in a boy. These are the hints given in the question so that we can come to the diagnosis of Lesch-Nyan syndrome. Lesch-Nyan syndrome is due to the deficiency of HGPRT enzyme. It is X-linked recessive. Second one. A clinical history of intellectual disability, musty body odor, hypopigmented skin and eczema. What is your diagnosis? Here the diagnosis is phenylketonuria. It is autosomal recessive disorder. It occurs due to decreased phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme. Here due to the deficiency of the phenylalanine hydroxylase, tyrosine production is reduced. So here tyrosine becomes essential. Treatment here is decreased phenylalanine and increased tyrosine in the diet. Third scenario, a patient complains of recurrent cold, abscess, eczema, high serum IgE levels, increased isinophils, and a baby teeth are seen. This gives you a hint of Jobs syndrome, which is also known as hyper IgM syndrome. It is due to neutrophil chemotaxis abnormality. Here, there will be a deficiency of TH17 cells due to STAT3 mutation. Next scenario. Late separation of umbilical cord, no pus, recurrent skin and mucosal bacterial infections. What is your diagnosis? Here, the diagnosis is leukocyte addition deficiency type 1. It is autosomal recessive disorder. Here the defect is in LFA1 integrin protein. Next scenario. Bluish black connective tissue, ear cartilage, sclera, urine turns black on prolonged exposure to air. What is your diagnosis? Here the diagnosis is alcaptonuria. It is autosomal recessive. Deficiency of homogenticate oxidase is seen. It is also known as ochronosis. May have debilitating arthralgias. Next scenario. Hematomatous GI polyps. Hyperpigmented macules on mouth, feet, hands and genitalia. What is your diagnosis? Here the diagnosis is putz jagger syndrome. It is autosomal dominant, benign polyposis is seen, can cause bowel obstruction, increased risk of breast and GI cancers. Here there will be a STK11 mutation seen. Next scenario. A boy presented with cervical lymphadenopathy, desquamating rash, coronary aneurysm, Red conjunctiva and tongue, hand, foot changes. What is your diagnosis? Here the diagnosis is Kawasaki disease. It is also known as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome. Here the treatment is IVIG and aspirin. Next scenario. A patient presented with dysphagia, hoarseness of voice, decreased gag reflex, nystagmus, ipsilateral Horner syndrome. What is your diagnosis? Here the diagnosis is lateral medullary syndrome, also known as Wallenberg syndrome. Here the artery affected is posterior inferior cerebellar artery. The lesion occurs in the area of nucleus ambiguous, vestibular nuclei, lateral spinothalamic tract 
and spinal trigeminal nucleus sympathetic fibers and inferior cerebellar peduncle next question a patient presented with a triad of urinary incontinence gait aphasia and cognitive dysfunction and the image is this what is your diagnosis here we see ventricular megaly with with a triad urinary incontinence gait and cognitive dysfunction here the answer is normal pressure hydrocephalus next staggering gait frequent falls nystagmus hammer tones diabetes mellitus hypertrophic cardiomyopathy what all these clinical features lead to then what is your diagnosis here the diagnosis is friedreich's ataxia it is autosomal recessive trinucleotide repeat disorder ga on chromosome number 9 degeneration of lateral cortico spinal tracts leading to spastic paralysis spinal cerebellar tract leads to ataxia dorsal column leads to decreased vibratory sense and proprioception and lesion in dorsal root ganglion leads to loss of deep tendon reflexes these are the 10 clinical scenarios what all we have learned let us see once again first it is about lesh nyhan syndrome is due to the deficiency of hgprt deficiency then next phenylketonuria it is autosomal recessive and uh, decreased phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme next hyper ige syndrome with a baby teeth is the main feature here next late separation of the umbilical cord leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 1 next alkaptonuria L- on uh, urine turns black on prolonged exposure to air next hematom- uh, hematomatous uh, polyps and uh, hyperpigmented patches it is spitz jagger syndrome next all uh, cervical lymphadenopathy disquamating rash these all are the features of kawasaki disease next it is a lateral medullary syndrome presenting with dysphagia hoarseness ipsilateral horner syndrome next uh, triad of urinary incontinence gait ataxia and cognitive dysfunction leading to normal pressure hydrocephalus next your hypertrophic cardiomyopathy diabetes mellitus leading to friedreich's ataxia next let us see about an important table here connections of thalamus thalamus major relay for all ascending sensory information all the sensory information gets relayed in the thalamus except for the olfaction olfactory neurons do not have any relay in the thalamus let us see the nucleus of the thalamus and their inputs and what is the function and output where it reaches first ventral posterior lateral nucleus the input to this comes from spinothalamic and dorsal columns or medial lemniscus the function of this is vibration pain pressure proprioception and light touch temperature also they take information to the primary somatosensory cortex parietal lobe next ventral posterior medial nucleus posterior medial nucleus they get trigeminal and gustatory pathways they carry the sensations of face and taste they relay uh, they give output to primary somatosensory cortex parietal lobe next lateral geniculate nucleus 
lateral geniculate nucleus gets their input from cranial nerve to optic chiasma optic tract senses is vision primary visual cortex medial geniculate nucleus from superior olivary and inferior colliculus of tectum hearing primary auditory cortex next ventral anterior and ventral lateral nuclei receives fibers from basal ganglia and cerebellum these are motor and reaches to the frontal lobe motor cortex first it is a vpl nucleus so remember like this vpl vibration pain pressure proprioception temperature we know the temperature temperature fibers are carried by spinothalamic tract so here the input is spinothalamic tract and uh, pain pre, uh, pressure uh, vibration and proprioception are carried by dorsal column so here dorsal column first vpl nucleus involves spinal thal spinothalamic tract and dorsal columns next um here the mnemonic is for ventro ventral posterior medial nucleus very pretty makeup goes on the face here very pretty means ventral posterior makeup medial ventral posterior medial and they carry face sensation this is the mnemonic and then lateral geniculate nucleus lateral for light so light fi uh, li for light fibers are cranial nerve 2 optic chiasm and optic tract next medial geniculate nucleus medial means music mm -M. so here hearing superior olivary and inferior colliculus next mm. uh, ventral anterior and ventral lateral nucleus here the mnemonic is venus astronauts vow to love moving so here moving is motor and uh, uh, venus astronauts it's ventral anterior these all are the relays of the thalamus next let us see two mnemonics what are the components of feltis syndrome remember like santa Santa means splenomegaly, anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, and arthritis. That is rheumatoid arthritis. These are the components of the Feltis syndrome. Next, what are the actions of morphine? Remember, like morphins, M for meiosis, O for orthostatic hypertension, orthostatic hypotension. Sorry, it is orthostatic hypotension not hypertension r for respiratory depression p for physical dependency h for histamine release i for increased icp n for nausea e for euphoria and s for sedation these are the actions of the morphine